Swan Lake, probably the most famous ballet of them all, and one that during our 50 year history at Northern Ballet, we have performed with no less than four full length versions. This ballet continues to inspire audiences and creatives today, and is as technically and artistically challenging now as it was when it was first created back in 1877. Before the 80s, Northern Ballet performed the third act, Black Swan Podida, in performances around the UK. But it wasn't until 1986 that we got our first full-length version by Robert de Warren and Andre Prokofsky. Northern Ballet then developed a more modern take on the tale in 1992 with choreography by Dennis Wayne, which was then reworked by Christopher Gable and Michael Pink in 1994. By 2004, David Nixon felt it was time to revisit this classic for Northern Ballet, and he developed a scenario alongside Patricia Doyle that saw the ballet expand to include four principal characters, Odette, Odelia, Anthony, and Simon. Traditionally, the principal female role is danced by one ballerina portraying two characters during the ballet, but David and Patricia reworked the traditional tale to give a more plausible story whilst retaining the traditional elements. Nixon's version has now cemented itself as a Northern Ballet staple. Our protagonist, Anthony, is haunted by the drowning of his brother at the lake. He's constantly drawn back there at times of uncertainty. His dear friends, Odelia and Simon, both confess they have intimate feelings for him. Confused by these omissions, his own developing feelings and societal pressure, he looks to the lake for comfort. And this is when we're first introduced to our Odette character a manifestation of Anthony's mind. Nixon's ballet is a tale of a dark, romantic young man whose sexual awakenings destroy his friendships and lead him into a dangerous realm of his romantic nature. Here we look back at the cast from 2016 in the second act of Nixon's ballet where Odelia has returned from a year in Paris to reunite with her friends and celebrate Anthony's birthday. Riku Itu trained at the Hamburg Ballet School after winning a scholarship to go there and joined Northern Ballet straight out of vocational training in 2014. Sarah Chun trained with Joffrey Ballet and danced for two companies in the States before joining Northern Ballet in 2016. Kevin Pung joined Northern Ballet as an apprentice during his last year of training at English National Ballet School in 2012. All three dancers are currently first soloists within the company. 
So this is the opening of the third act of David Nixon's Swan Lake and this is a fantastically exciting rehearsal because these dancers that you're about to watch, Riku and Sarah and Kevin will join them in a minute, they've never done these principal parts before so it's going to be a debut for all three of them. At this moment in time we join Anthony who's kind of slipping further and further into his depression. He feels a calling back to the lake and this swan-like figure that he's seen and he's also dealing with the complex relationships between his wife Odelia, and also his best friend, Simon. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Good. All right. He's Good a guys. very Breathe. complex character, and really the sadness of this ballet is in that his two best friends aren't able to connect enough with him and pull him out of his depression. You really see her moving to her, and now just as it would come, you would go away. That's it. 
And just don't pull on your arm because otherwise you're pulling her off. Yeah. Coming in, sensing her, let it go. That's it. And then she goes. And then the next thing is over here at the bed. It's too small a reaction for the audience, I think. What, you, what you're doing is correct, but you stay too much in your space. Like, if you come to her and you see her, you need to like really move away so that she has also something to do to bring you back. Yeah, it's still... It, it's not, uh, I don't see it One of the it fantastic clearly. things about being coached by the choreographer of the work and also for us at Northern Ballet, the artistic director of the company, is he really spends the time to get the narrative correct and also to use it as an opportunity to develop the talent in the company. So as I said before, Sarah and Rico, this is the first time that they're doing this. So he's spending a lot of time with them about the small, tiny details, the mannerisms in which they can really um, make those characters concrete. And so he's suggesting to them, okay, that's brilliant, that's a very human reaction to that, but actually for stage, we need to make that a little bit bigger. We need to actually allow a bit more space so that it really reads to the back of the auditorium. Yeah, I think of the second one. Can you use your butt? Like, I, it, it's, it's just not comfortable. I'm not, it, it doesn't sit with me, yeah? And then, Sarah, I think you need to be, so as he builds his reactions, you need to build your reactions, so you become more insistent, you know. Can we just look at um, the fall on the floor after the break break? So she breaks, you break. Good. Now see her. So first see her. Now go towards her as if you're going to really and now move out of it. That's it there. I quite like that actually better than the other version. I thought I might because it's, it fits in a little bit better with the changes we've done previously. It's a little bit left over from the other style of it. And this is kind of more real, like what you might do and how you go out of it. Yeah. Um, Sarah, the solo was really good, really well connected. The only thing I always find is the women, because of the pirouette, they, I, I see the center into the head on the pirouette. So, so when you turn, instead of just going into it, don't worry whether it works. Yeah. Up and go. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought, this was good. You stop. You need a bit more time here. A bit more time for that mental transition from anger to <sighs> forgiveness, yeah? And almost there's a breath there as you go into the next role. And then she's gentle here. This was nice. Riku, as soon as she, I think as soon as you feel that, react in your body as if it is what you want, yeah? So the leg starts to go there, that's it. And roll, and this was good. This is nice how you make this work, the two of you, yeah? Just make sure that this next part is clear, that it's embrace, and then on the one you go. Yeah. <laughs> and she embraces one. That's it. Now try and roll. See, this is where your spacing is really bad, Riku. Yeah, we should be up. I mean, the bed is a bit on. It should, but for the for what we're doing, sake, we need the spacing probably. But yeah. This last lift was not. Yeah, I, I had different grip. Yeah. You did something. Now take your time on this next thing. Sarah, can, can, can you reach your leg more that way so the journey is going more like that? Yeah. 
good. Now make the journey long. Long journey, long journey, round, good. Okay, three. All so the way through this part of the Pas de Trois, actually, with just the Pas de Deux here with these guys, the whole purpose of this is that we want to see Odilia really requesting Anthony to come out of his dark place and to say to him, I, I am here, I love you, let me help you. And so all of the choreography is leading us to that point. She's trying to look at him in the eyes, she's trying to embrace him, and for whatever reason, he just won't allow himself to be supported and loved. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to pause there. That is such beautiful work between the two of you. It's so <laughs> organic in the partnering. It's just, it's wonderful. It's just so wonderful to see that. Yeah. It's the first time we've ever seen this menage with both men getting up in the air like that. Yeah. So nobody yeah. else has an excuse not to <laughs> It's a really good point that David's made there. It's incredibly difficult to do that partnering between two male dancers. But both of these, not only are they fantastic dancers individually, but together they're working really well. So they've got that beautiful mix of energy and coordination. And then obviously they've got the line, so the accuracy in which they're hitting those lines is really crystal clear. And for David, that just means that his choreography is coming over in the, in, with the most clarity. And therefore, the audience is getting the most out of the narrative. Push it, make him sit, that's it. Yeah, and then you're still doing this fifth on the air, this next arabesque instead of the assembly's fine. This is good. Now free your arms here. Free your arms. That's it. Good. Yeah. Good. And I don't know. I think you can. When you get up here, can you try to make this blend into this arabesque better than you kind of land and then you, you're looking for where your legs going? Can you plie more? Plie. You go pulling away from him, that's it. So that there's a, more of a reaction there, which suits more all the other stuff you do, which is now also well-timed and natural. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. Super. Um, is it all right, uh, if we play from the manege, can we just pick up getting into 
the next sequence. What's wonderful about the way that David choreographs is he's not afraid to leave real time for the kind of emotions to really travel to the audience so everybody understands what's going on. But as a performer, when you're allowed that kind of breath and that space to really be in the moment, it can feel quite, um, quite powerful and it makes you feel very in command of your performance. So they'll do this menage again and then there'll be the breakaway and then you'll just see them both sat contemplating where the relationship is right now. seeing is real life emotions play out as this 
beautiful childhood relationship between all three of these characters just starts to splinter and drift away, all kind of under the guise of watching somebody's mental health just decline. So there's a real sadness and a heaviness to this because all they really want to do is support and help Anthony and actually by expressing their true emotions and love for him, both of these characters have ultimately added to the destruction of his life. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. So Riku, when you really get there emotionally, you really get there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's beautiful, beautiful what, what happened in the end. The only thing I would say is that I didn't quite clock when, when Odila came in and she pushed you, that you actually saw her. Yeah. No, it's right there in the very from that thing there, that you actually see her before you... Otherwise, it's kind of like we don't quite understand why you've had the reaction that you've had of going, closing into this world. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big boy for you. <laughs> So what's really important about that is that David wants to make sure that every single one of those characters has their narrative very, very clear. Of course, as the audience member, we're going to maybe only be focusing on one or two of those characters, but they all need to be adding to the story. So as Sarah there breaks the boys apart, then we need to see both of their reactions. We need to see Anthony's horror at Odelia having caught him with his best friend and then we need to see Simon also his devastation at being caught as it were and especially also his devastation at the fact that he too is betraying his best friend in Odelia um, and also ultimately that this leads to them all splintering. And it's that touch that then makes him him touch you because you are his friend. This was nice. This next step is all nice. You got a little bit off on I don't think that's correct. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, that's a really beautiful moments as well in this when the boys are dancing together and David's been really clever and he's used some repeat choreography from the first act and that's when the boys are a, a lot younger and they're in the kind of the heights of their relationship as just best friends and so you're kind of drawn back into that memory of how joyful they were and how much pleasure they took in each other's company and then of course that just adds to the sadness um, of when they finally get to that point of being ripped apart. I don't think, after you did this arabesque, I, don't, I think you can keep moving. Really? Yeah. 
Because he's a little bit taller than you, so yeah. he'll reach you. Okay. Well, here. Now keep turning, keep turning. And that's it. There you go. And move round. That's it. That's it. Good. I think what's great about this is both of these dancers individually have really fantastic jumps. Their elevation is brilliant and they have a really light quality when they go up into the air. But they're also both fantastic partners. So they've kind of got the best of both worlds. They enjoy being lifted, but they also like to lift and they both love to jump. On the lake and splashing each other and wrestling and enjoying the friendship, yeah. And this is it again because remember you've been separated, yeah. So you haven't really seen him for, let's say, eight months or something yeah. since the wedding, yeah. And this is the first time back, and you've come into a negative scenario, but that's all of a sudden turned back into this magical moment from your youth, yeah. yeah? And that actually goes further than this time he's with you. Whereas the first time you were going somewhere where he couldn't really follow. This time he, he, he wants to, in a way, follow you. Yeah. Um, good. You know, it's really good, actually. Even though you were quite early on the floor into this moment here, the way you did it was, was so organic in terms of arriving to each other, which is what it needs to be. It was kind of like all of a sudden you were face to face. Yeah. Um, Kevin, the only thing I, I think can be stronger from you is with the relationship with, with Odelia there. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt like you're kind of a little bit, like he wants, to go, he wants to just leave, right? That's what he's doing. He's just leaving the room. He's going to walk away from the scenario. She's, you know, and Sarah's quite strong. So she comes up to you. You're not going anywhere till I've had words with you. Yeah. Now you keep trying to not listen, but by, by the end it becomes, it should become more of a fight between the two of you, mm -hmm. that again it's this exhaustion. The moment that Dave is talking about is really fantastic actually for the, for the character that Sarah is playing, because you get that kind of confrontation. You see this devastating thing occurring in front of you where it's suggesting that your husband is potentially having a relationship with his best friend, and then you get to confront him about it on stage. So it's a real moment of um, heightened drama because you just can't spend the energy. So that's a little bit what I'm trying to capture in quite a, a fast moment here is, is this between the two of you that exhausts you actually. You can't even get back to him. Well, you do go back to him, but you still, you don't have much to say now. Like you're just too tired. You're too tired to fix this. You're too tired to, you just, just too tired. <laughs> yeah. Shall we just look at, um, the second time, so when Sarah comes back to you when you're leaving, yeah? So Sarah, I think the stop is excellent, but I don't think I'm not going to clock that as much as, yeah? That's it. Good. That's it. Start getting up. Let her push you down. That's it. Now, now that's it. Now you want your say to her. Wait a minute. It's not all, because it's not all your fault. Yeah. She has something to play in this, this threesome scenario as well. Yeah. Is Riku still alive? Yeah. Okay. Kevin and, and Sarah, because you're so organic, is there a way from here that you can move more into this lift rather really than just a step for the two of the you? I think really fantastic, again, the way that David choreographs is that he allows a lot and now of space travel for the with artists it. to add their interpretation. So Kevin, he's not can, can we do chasse? Sorry, can we do a chasse into it? Relationships. He's asking yeah. questions about their relationship and how they might so you pull her with each other. That's which up into it, it just into the back and out. So this one's away. You try to go to her and she doesn't want to know about it. And to looking at each other and fall, face each other, and away. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I absolutely loved that rehearsal. It was really, um, it was really, it was magic. Actually, it was brilliant. Um, where are you at in terms of is this your first experience of Swan Lake in this company? Have you done other um, versions of it anywhere else? Because Riku, I think, 
Is this, you've done this one like before? Yeah, I've done it once my second year here okay. uh, Northern Ballet, so, but yeah, in a different uh, role I've done. Yeah, uh, okay. It was like a younger role. And, uh, okay, yeah. so this is kind of your f the first time of doing Anthony, the lead yeah, role? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. brilliant. And how does that, are you excited? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course it is excited, but it's very difficult to change the emotions in every act. Um, you know, as maybe you saw in the rehearsal, like yeah. rejecting or like just walking away, you know, like the difference in between those. It's like, yeah. yeah it's and I thought David made a really great point there, actually, didn't he? Because he said, you need to obviously reject yeah. both of your best friends, yeah. but we still need to feel for you as an yeah. audience member. And there's a really fine balance. Um, do you enjoy those kind of elements, those details? Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's just yeah. it's hard to process in my head yes. and you know to <laughs> physicalize it in my body. Mm. But um, yeah, it just helps. Say, and every rehearsal, he yeah, yeah. keeps throwing me all the new, um, you know, uh, thoughts and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, brilliant. I mean, it looks fantastic, Sarah. For, for you, is this your first time of Northern's version of Swan Lake? Yeah, yeah? it's my okay. first time doing Northern's. I've done a few other versions before, yeah. but um, I'm enjoying Northern's uh, version so far. Okay. Like, brilliant. It's and for the women in Swan Lake, of course, we all have to do all of the roles. So you've got you're doing a corps de ballet Swan place as well as well as Odelia. Yeah. Do you enjoy that um, kind of the versatile nature of that? You know, effort. It's quite tough physically, but in the end, like I like doing the core because I do feel like quite close with the women, and we feel yes. like more like a unit. And I think it's quite easy to forget that when you start to go through the ranks. And when at Northern, it's quite special because they make even the leading soloists mm -hmm. or whatnot or principals do the core roles and it's actually quite humbling because yeah. as you get older you're looking back on oh these younger ones they're so nervous but you kind of take that leadership role and you yeah. know kind of calm them down while managing doing your principal roles as well and mm -hmm. it's actually quite nice because you forget how tough the core is you know <laughs> and sometimes in Swan Lake especially the core is actually what backs up the principles and yeah. it's yeah it's just tough work but I, yeah. I love it yeah I think that's a really good point isn't it actually almost the principal part in Swan Lake is that that body that corps de ballet of swans yeah and then have you obviously we're rehearsing in a very different um way than we normally would have you are you at the point where you're doing full rehearsals with everybody or is it have you just very much been keeping um with the three of you working together and obviously Ayami mm -hmm. as well because she's doing Odette yeah we've been kind of um just doing our principal roles mm -hmm. at the moment and uh randomly I'll be able to go to the core rehearsals but since Covid yeah um it's been a little bit segregated mm -hmm. um it's nice because you really focus on mm -hmm. you know a certain role but also it's a bit tough because you want to mingle and kind of mesh with the group as well yeah but. okay but i guess that's something to look forward to and yeah. incredible that you're able to generate such a fantastic atmosphere between the three of you that's only going to grow when you get in there with the whole corps de ballet mm -hmm. so it'd be brilliant kevin is this your first time playing the role of simon it is yeah okay i'm excited about it and <laughs> okay brilliant yeah. and dancing with those two it's you yeah. kind of feel the chemistry and yeah. because I think we're quite good friends, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's so nice to work with them. Yeah, um, no, I, that really came across as a, a genuine rapport between all three of you and that, um, I don't know, just really, you feel comforting when you're watching that and also, it, it, I don't know, you really want for those people, so um, yeah, it's brilliant, it's very enjoyable. Um, Riku, it's a big show <laughs> for Anthony, it's yes. a long night. Are you um, relishing that kind of the challenge of climbing that mountain or <laughs> how uh, do you feel about it right now? I mean, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Of course I'm excited, but I know that it's two hour length, like, you know, you're full on on the stage mm. for four, three, three, four arcs. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's challenging, mm -hmm. I guess, but uh, I think it's a good time to um, push I'd say, yeah, push myself and yeah. I work hard and you know yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know yeah no I think it's brilliant and I love uh, I always love the challenge of that and almost that kind of cat and mouse of will I won't I make mm, it yeah, I don't know yeah. it builds an excitement yeah. doesn't it yeah. for something what about um about you Kevin how do you feel about that in terms of I do mean, you enjoy the the marathon I do yeah yeah I love um the feel after the show, mm. when you've, you're kind of <laughs> yeah. exhausted, but you feel like you've achieved something, yeah. mm -hmm. you've accomplished. And 
because it's quite emotionally um, hard. Yeah, and driven. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that build up to the end, um, it takes a bit out of you. But yeah. that ending is just when you let it all go and you can yeah. chill after that. Yeah. But I love that process of it. Yeah, no, I, I always did as well. And Sarah, what about for you? Because female dancers always have to do, and forgive me if you feel this is wrong, chaps, but a lot more <laughs> planning because we've got to incorporate the point shoes. Yeah. I always thought of Swan Lake as it was a pair and act. <laughs> it's just so demanding, isn't it? So how will you prepare for the, the kind of the longevity of the role? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think in general, um, like you say, like women have to plan just the point <laughs> shoe because it's quite um, important because mm. we do rely on that. I mean, obviously the technique helps, but the shoe is also yeah. very important. Um, yeah, I'm actually quite excited because um, with the pandemic, I, I lost a little bit of confidence because we weren't performing as much. And yeah. I, f I felt like, oh, am I you know, still strong. I felt quite on a high after Geisha because, you know, I was doing yeah, one of the main roles yeah. and I felt quite at the top of my game. And But then Swan Lake, as these rehearsals were building, actually gave me a, quite a bit of confidence. Like, a, as each act we kept working on, I was like, oh, I can do this because it's a challenging ballet, especially as Adelia. She really goes through, uh, she kind of goes through a very long journey compared yes. to Odette. Yeah. And, I find that she actually gave me quite a lot of confidence through the rehearsals. So yeah. I'm really excited and like you said, it's all about the preparation with the shoes and <laughs> just getting yourself mentally ready as well. Yeah. Because it's a stamina push and I'm quite mm. excited for that. Yeah. I think what's interesting about it is I found it to be a really brilliant blend of kind of pure technique versus that character and indulging mm. in all of the sides of whichever character that you were playing. For me, that helped because I, I was confident going into it because I had a reason for it. It wasn't just about executing gorgeous classical steps. Mm. How much of that plays a role for you in preparing for a role or how you feel when you're on stage, having that depth of character? It really yeah, helps me. It does. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. It's, I think it's the driving force of an artist, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's like... You know, like uh, like obviously you said, technically, you know, doing the steps brilliantly helps. But I think emotionally, being emo emotionally driven is actually quite key, and it helps me actually, because mm. then I don't, I don't, I stop thinking about the steps, and yeah. I just kind yes. of feel it yeah. versus doing it. You know. Okay. Because I would say watching you, you're all so incredibly natural in your characters. I I believe they are real. They are really living this moment, but also technically you're all incredible and I'm wondering like how conscious you are of that or do you think that each other impacts on the other and you're kind of having to step up mm -hmm. to, to keep kind of kind of keep pace <laughs> in a very um friendly competitive manner yeah I think the, the second yeah. one yeah for me because they're incredible oh so you know God. you've got to push each other up a oh bit, gosh. yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Well, that helps me to push even more. Yeah, yeah. These so. two keep me on my toes, like, <laughs> it's just hilarious. They're just absolutely brilliant, so, yeah. yeah. Where does your motivation come? Is there, where's your drive? Is it for you about being the best? Um, or is it about getting different types of roles? Or what kind of, what, what drives you? Um. When I was younger, I was like very competitive guy. Like <laughs> I, I, w I wanted to be the best on this and jump yeah, yeah. and turn and everything. <laughs> but then I joined this company, you know, as you work longer and longer, you have to <laughs> actually, it's not just about turning or jumping high. It's more like about, you know, like how you dance, how you react to the audience, how yeah. you, you know, connection yeah. to the audience. And yeah, so yeah. I. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that's yeah. a really good point. I think there's that that's what makes ballet so interesting. Yeah. It's competitive, but then you also have in the mix of that the artistry of it and it's kind of trying to find that balance. Yeah. Mm. Um I mean Sarah, what kind of drives you? For me it's just striving to be better every day like with myself because mm. I'm quite tough on myself, you know that. And <laughs> I you know, so I'm always trying to be better myself and also I love. I prefer dancing with in trios and potters rather than solos because mm. I I feed off mm. energy and I yeah. especially with yeah. Kevin and Riku as you saw in the rehearsal, they motivate me not to just be better by myself but as a better partner as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. finding yeah. that connection and hard work and energy 
you know, coming together. Yeah. And yeah, that's the driving force for me is just striving to be better for myself mm -hmm. every day. But these guys motivate me as well. So yeah. that's really nice. Okay. I mean, I think what's been wonderful to me is I've been part of this production of Swan Lake since it was first choreographed by David so I've seen so many different casts in it and what's brilliant is that original cast were obviously fantastic and at the time were exactly what David wanted but to now see you guys doing it somehow you've given the production I don't know it feels like it's taken it into a different direction perhaps and there's even more meaning in it um I what does it mean for you guys to be able to work directly with somebody like David who's not only your boss but it's actually the, the choreographer and the all of the ideas are from him and he's giving you the kind of um, the guidance it's actually been really helpful we've mm -hmm. had more rehearsals with David um, lately and mm -hmm. each rehearsal he brings something new and he's so he has such an eye that, yeah like yeah. the attentive like to detail mm -hmm. is just absolutely brilliant and he just always makes a light bulb go off. Do you know what I mean? So yes. He always brings up something <laughs> that. that you never even thought of. Do you know what I mean? You're focused somewhere else, and then he brings another focus, and you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah. obviously, he's the choreographer. He yeah. seems, you know, he has that idea. And yeah, it's been absolutely great. I mm. love that. I feel like he puts, like, um, in every single step, like, he has, uh, I don't know, like, a reason to do these steps, well, or like this, this movement, this hands and everything. So it's like so much backstory and the, you know, details uh, about the characters. And mm. yeah, it's very interesting to see like what he's seeing, kind of. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very different to what I see and what he what <laughs> he sees. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's but right. again, that's the joy of it, isn't it? Being allowed that space to, um, to I guess the space to fail maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But what um. Are you excited to, to do the second act? Because really the second act <laughs> is, the, is the moment when it's, there's not much um, time, it's just one evening. Mm. And actually it's just about being a really fabulous dancer. Does that fill you with, um, I don't know, dread? Or do you, will you rise to the challenge? <laughs> for, for, for Odelia, the second act is like for personally um, the most challenging. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the music is absolutely fabulous. So, mm. you know, that also drives you. And um, yeah, and no, I'm really excited. I'm up for the challenge. I don't know how well it will go, but I'm excited. Mm. That's great. Brilliant. Well, guys, <laughs> that's been just fantastic and so great to talk to you. And I am, as I say, I'm just really excited to see you all make your debut together. It's brilliant. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.